Today we get another visit from one of the friends of Ben's menu, Lexi from Bessemer. And Lexi, there's beer. There is, Ben. We're actually going to make a beer bread today. It's beer very and bread, easy. that's all there is to life. Okay, well You're this... You're not making bread in that pot, are you? I am. I'm actually going to make it in a saucepan. I thought you'd find this quite interesting. I am going to find this very interesting. So this is actually one of the medium saucepans that we have in our range. I do personally use this size a lot. It's very versatile for your home. When you first look at it, you think, oh yeah, it's just a saucepan and it's a great saucepan. But this is actually an oven. You're freaking me out, Lexi. I know. Um, your little chocolate cakes, any little butter cakes that you want to do. This is the one I cook my rice in. I find this perfect to do all your absorption rice in here. And this will make up to four cups of cooked rice as well. So you're actually getting a very versatile piece of mm. cookware. The other thing that you can do is add our stainless steel steamer on top of this one. So while you're cooking your casserole in the bottom, you can steam your vegetables on the top. Nice. It'll hold about a kilo of mince or up to five to 600 grams of stewing steak in this size to make a casserole. So it's only versatile if you know what to do with it though, isn't it? Exactly. So you've got to have those skills up your sleeve to be able to get the most out of it. Exactly, and that's not why we like to demonstrate to people in the home or we have free cooking classes that people can come to so that we can show them how to get the most out of our cookware because it is very unique that you can use it yeah. as an oven on top of the stove. Let's make bread in a saucepan. Okay, so this size is two and a half litres, so it's a good size to have in the family. We don't heat it again, so it's a cold pan and everything just gets thrown in. So in this, we have your um, three cups of self-raising flour. And this is called sifting the flour. Okay, so just give it a little bit of a shake up. Then we're going to pop in some sun dried tomatoes. You can change the flavours, you don't have to use sun dried tomatoes, you can use herbs in there, you can use feta. And then we have some parmesan cheese to add some flavour. So I'll just actually might not go overboard with that, I'll just put the two spoonfuls in, I think. Or maybe three. Go overboard. <laughs> Go overboard? All right. <laughs> it's on you. I love parmesan cheese. Okay. So we're just going to mix that through in the of the, all the mixture. So now we're going to have to give up your wonderful glass of beer. So this is a full stubby of beer. It does need to be warm, so don't take it straight out of the fridge because we need the warmth to activate the yeast okay. in it. And even if you don't like the taste of the beer, I often have um, ladies that say to me, oh, I don't like the taste of beer when it's all cooked through in here yeah. the taste because of all the extras you've added into it uh, it doesn't taste like beer yeah it's very subtle now when you're mixing in your cookware because we use a non-stick coating on it you can't use anything metal so we highly recommend that you use your nylon or wooden um, utensils so and don't be afraid to get into there because they are safe to use with the cookware and give it a really good stir around and then just simply Smooth it out, poke it in and spread it around. And you don't have to worry about all the mess on the <laughs> side. <laughs> you look really shocked here. It always happens. I know, it is incredible. There's a little man in my head, Lexi, screaming at you going, no, don't let it put that on the <laughs> oven. We're just going to top it with a little bit of cheese. Now, you have More to cheese. be... You have to be moderate, you can't be heavy handed. It's not like cooking in the oven. In the oven, it dries out. In here, it tends to hold the moisture. So if you add too much, you'll find that it'll go soggy. Okay. So you've got to use moderation. All right, everything so, in moderation. Everything in moderation. So we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit, and I try to keep it away from the sides of the pan because I need to feel the bread itself to know whether it's cooked. Okay. That's all I'm gonna put. Always wipe the rim part of your pans. Really good seal. Yeah, and because the inside of the lid is coated with the non-stick coating, so that stays clean, but we've left the rim uncoated so that when we place it onto the pan, it grabs the heat. So the principle is the heat travels across the bottom, up the sides, across to the centre, and the last place for it to heat is right in the centre of the pan. So you try to do your touch hot test as close to the, the centre of the pan you can. So we're going to Open the vent, do you remember how we... Yeah, open, 
Yes. Oven, open. Over oven, over open. Love and it. we find the little bump on yep. the lid. The little thing that everyone thinks is an imperfection, that's but right. it's there for a reason. Exactly, that's your indicator. So just make sure one of the holes are in line with that. Wipe off any excess to keep your pan nice and clean and pop it onto your cooktop. Medium, we always, when we're baking, we go on medium heat and that allows the heat to travel around the pan. Once we've reached that touch hot, which is just simply holding your fingers there for th the count of three, once it's reached that temperature, it's like your oven light that turns off and says, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's telling you I'm ready. And then you turn it down to low because you don't want to burn the bottom and you time your bread from there. So we'll just turn on the gas, being gas, to it's a half flame. Pop the saucepan in the middle gently and allow for it to do its work. This is not such a wide pan, but it is deep. So it will take approximately five minutes for the heat to travel, come up the sides and reach the heat. Once we've got it on that touch hot, Give it about 30 to 35 minutes to make sure it's cooked and then we're going to tip it out and turn it upside down to brown the cheese. So we'll just simply, you can see the nice crispy from the bottom. Oh, that's how it yeah. should sound. So hopefully the cheese is nice and golden now. Just put your plate or your board on top. Voila. Oh give that to you. Thank you. And turn off our gas. And there's your beautiful, cheesy, sun-dried tomato beer bread. Fingers crossed. It's all good. It's very hot. <laughs> Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to try some. Good. I always have a problem. I always eat stuff when it's too hot. Too hot. <laughs> Whoa. Good. Whoa, that's so good, Lexi. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you.